So uh, good afternoon. I'm, I'm Anuj Desai, and it's um, really great to be here. I thank you, Will, for the opportunity. Um, I feel like we've been working um, for New York, because we've been working with California for the last two years on the Interoperability Workgroup. And it's so great to see many old friends again and uh, talk a little bit about what New York is doing and how our strategy is all about working in collaboration with other states and, and the vendor community in terms of building an ecosystem. So what I want to talk about uh, today, good works. Uh, is a few things. Um, so it might be a little all over the place, and I apologize for that. And I also apologize, I'm not an engineer, so I'm, I'm more about the business side, about how we're going to do exchange and some of the interoperability standards we're pushing. Um, I want to talk a little bit about New York's HIE strategy and um, just tell you about some lessons we've learned and how we're going about um, driving interoperability and driving exchange for providers and building the ecosystem. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about a bulk provisioning um, of interfaces that we're doing. It's going to be something kind of... Um, I would say kind of innovative in terms of we're buying up interfaces from all the providers or the EMR vendors for our providers in, in, a, in, a, in a way. Um, talk a lot about the interoperability work group and, and the work that we're doing there. And then finally talk about the exemplar HIE governance grant um, that Dr. Kibbe received for Drug Trust, but we also received on behalf of the interoperability work group. So let's just start out with our vision. Um, this is what we use um, all the time, and this is really truly what NICE believes. Um, you know, the ecosystem is going to require a lot of different tools to prepare. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I apologize. Nice is the New York eHealth Collaborative. I use it inter interchangeably a lot. So nice, our vision is that it takes um, really, there's many tools that are going to be out there for payers, for providers, for patients and consumers, all, all the different types of stakeholders in the ecosystem. But we need to work together. One entity can't do it alone. Uh, what we've seen is no single company has all the requirements that all our providers and patients needs. We need to work together as an ecosystem. And, and many of our strategies we've in implemented in New York is all about working as an ecosystem. So the New York Yield Collaborative, NICE, uh, we're the nonprofit state designated entity for New York. Uh, we have a few different missions. One is to promote the adoption of electronic health records in New York. Uh, we have two regional extension centers in New York. Uh, we're one of the RECs. Uh, we have over 10,000 providers now on EMR, so we feel very strong about that. Uh, we build the SHINee. The SHINee is our statewide health information network of New York. Horrible acronym, but uh, it's our statewide network uh, that we've been doing it for a while. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about more about what that is. Uh, we also develop policies where, the, where we work with our State Department of Health and all different work groups to create state policies. And finally, where, where my role really is, is building this ecosystem of creating different partners and tools and states and vendors that can work together um, to drive innovation. The Shiny. So the Shiny really is, is the statewide network. Um, New York State has made a significant investment in health <coughs> HIE since 2006. Uh, it's been close to $1 billion, actually, um, invested into the state through federal and state dollars, majority of its state dollars, actually. And what that's led to is, is, is a network of HIEs. Um, there's actually 10 HIEs now in the state. Um, about three of them have combined into one, which is good. That's what we want to see. Um, and, and those HIEs are, you know, depending on where you're in the state, you know, upstate, they're in Albany and Syracuse and Rochester, smaller cities um, that probably are similar to many of the cities here in California. And what they really um, found in the smaller communities is really good adoption. So Rochester, Rio, you guys may know Rochester, Rio. <laughs> They have um, some of the highest adoption in the country, in their region. They find people really don't travel outside those counties for care. Um, so they've seen really amazing outcomes um, uh, in terms of adoption. Down, at, down, in the, down state in the city, uh, with, so within 200 miles of New York City, there's 14 million people. It's a lot of people. Um, there's five HIEs in, in the city here. And um, what we're trying to do really is NICE is operating now as this, the um, service provider, the technology service provider for those Rios in the city. To make it so that whether you live in Brooklyn, work in Manhattan, maybe go to the beach in Long Island, your patient record is available no matter where you are in the city. And so we're stitching together that network that's called the Shiny, and um, starting very aggressively on adoption, specifically downstate. Um, in the city, because that's where the adoption hurdles are the most. Um, to date, we have 80% connectivity of hospitals in the state to the Shiny. Um, we have um, uh, over um, 50, most communities have about 50% adoption of the stakeholders within their community um, by the end of the year. 
We have a 20% adoption of practices, so we need to increase that significantly, and I'll talk about strategies we're going around that. And about 25% of patients statewide have consented uh, to access the HIV as well. So I want to talk a little bit about how we envision the Shiny. So the Shiny to us is a platform, right? So the Shiny is our statewide network. It really encompasses three major um, services we're offering. Search, so it's patient record lookup. Send, which is direct, as, as David had talked about earlier. And then event notification. Um, so, so those are the three core services that are part of the Shiny. And the Shiny also represents the trust, right? So all of the data that's in all the different EHRs, all the interfaces we build to the Shiny are all part of this, this, this platform that we're calling it. And, and we have over 150 EHR vendors in New York, um, so really the smorgasbord of vendors. And we have a team of about 20 interface engineers at NICE that are building interfaces all day long, right? So a lot of, lot of um, interface work happening. What we've created on top of the Shiny is something, I would say, kind of innovative. We've opened up an API layer on top of the Shiny, so the Shiny API. Um, we're in beta right now. It's going to go full general release in September. And that is the first clinical API in the country to provide access to the clinical data that's part of the Shiny to companies that are building tools that can sit on top of the Shiny. So our vision really is to, you know, right now the only way to get access to the EHI data is through an EHR. But we know there's many tech companies, other vendors out there that want to get access to that data too to build innovative tools. So what we're going to do is we're bringing the cost of the platform down to make it a commodity. It's Fios, it's electricity in the ground, it's, it's, that's what that is. And focus on building the ecosystem of different innovative tools from the entrepreneurial community, through the developers, through EMR vendors, et cetera, um, to really grow the ecosystem. So it's kind of, that's kind of the vision that we're really going after in New York is bring the cost of the network down, bring the cost of interfaces down to plug and play, which I'll talk about here in a minute, and then drive innovation through a series of partners and vendors um, that, that, are, that are building on top of it. And, and we're doing that through really a, a few different ways. Advances. And, and then I'll move over into the Neuropopoly work group here in a minute. I um, just want to highlight three different programs that we've developed, and I'm happy to talk more about it with you later. Um, first is the New York Digital Health Accelerator Program. So um, you may be familiar with the different accelerator models that are happening. I think Rock Health is in San Francisco. Our accelerator is later stage. Um, one of the key problems for startup companies is getting access to the large customers, the large provider, the large hospital systems. So we paired up eight companies. We, we call a call for companies of 250 companies. We selected eight that our providers felt were the strongest. And we paired them up with 23 large hospitals in New York State. Out of that, through that nine-month program, we resulted in 17 pilots. Those eight companies were the first eight companies to get access to our Shiny API. And then a syndicate of investors invested about up to $650,000 per company to really give them the seed funding uh, to continue in their development. Uh, we'll be opening our next um, program here in the fall, and that resulted in about 100 jobs um, in New York City, which is great. We um, have a patient portal for New Yorkers, so we want to give access to consumers access to their healthcare as well. So we've, we um, did a challenge um, um, for, for developers to build the most innovative designs uh, for a patient portal. We had 100,000 New Yorkers vote for their best designs. And now we're, we're building out this portal to launch the end of the year. And that'll allow our providers to meet their mean for use to attestations, as well as allowing um, patients to go online and manage their consent and get access to their records no matter where it came from. And then finally, last but not least, um, we have a series of events we're doing called Shani Developer Program uh, around our API. And uh, we just recently did a hackathon at, um, to get new developers in to learn about healthcare. That's kind of how we're looking at innovation. But all that innovation really doesn't matter unless we have all the data from all the providers in the network. So, you know, we've seen this before. Oh, yeah, there it is. We've seen this before. You know, what are the barriers to exchange? We know about this, right? There's lack of standards, or there's many standards out there, but there's no common implementation standards. You know, EHR adoption, I think now we're, we're pretty good in terms of EHR adoption, but we need to increase significantly. There's a lot of costs associated with these interfaces. There's custom development every time an interface is built. The cost to New York is staggering if we think through how many still practices we need to get connected to the Shiny. And it's not a mandate. 
So, um, you know, providers have trouble figuring out what is the use case? Why do I want to do exchange? So at New York, we've, we've developed a few different strategies to kind of get out of this angle. The interoperability work group, which I'll talk about here in a minute, is a collection, is a work group made up of states and vendors working together to build common implementation guides for direct patient record lookup. Bulk provisioning of interfaces, our board approved $2 million to go buy up interfaces from all the different vendors that are in the state who already have um, practices connected to an EMR. Let's buy them up in one swoop. Give us a Sam's Club low cost price to, get, to buy them up, and that's what we're talking about now. The exemplary HI governance program, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, we have this whole strategic marketing campaign where we're um, targeting providers, marketing to providers the value of the HIE, and identifying leverage points of why they would want to use the HIE. And then policy levers. Uh, we're working on a regulation now where we're going to um, try to outlaw um, uh, proprietary interfaces in New York. You will have to follow these standards we've put in place. Um, so, so there's a lot of uh, uh, legs around that. So the bulk provisioning program, just talk very briefly about this. Um, you know, we knew there was a big issue in terms of many practices had the EMRs already in place. Small practices through the rec, they had them in place. But it, the, the, the cost was ast astronomical to try to get them to connect to the HIE. Um, maybe there was the value prop wasn't there. Or, but, but we also know that a provider, when they go to an HIE, if they search the HIE two or three times, they don't find any data in it, they're not going to come back again. So we needed to create this mass. We needed to create, um, how do we get a lot of people in the Shiny really quickly? So we, we've launched this RFP to the vendor community to say, tell us, give us your, cost, your Costco Sam's Club price for buying up interfaces. And, and you have to use the standards that were developed with the interoperability work group. And you have to give us a timeline of when you're going to get there. So we had seven um, vendors responded. Um, they gave us an average of 45% discount. Um, so we feel good about that. Some of them are as high as 70% discount off list price. The cost of these interfaces are between $2,000 to $12,000, right? So it's pretty high what they're charging practices now. And the maintenance is between $100 to $2,000 a month. Uh, we believe after this program, if we do this program successfully, we'll have 200 new practices connected to the Shiny and 1,500 new providers connected to the Shiny over the next few years. So um, we're happy to share any details around that program. If that, um, we've heard from other states that it might be an interesting uh, way to approach it. Um, you know, um, buying them up through state dollars, I think we think that's a good way to spend state dollars is buying up interfaces um, for small practices. Okay. So the interoperability work group um, is the other thing, next thing I'm going to talk about. You know, we knew uh, when we created this work group that we couldn't do it alone. You know, each individual HIE, individual state, doesn't have enough leveraging power with their vendor community to tell them, let's do it this one way. I think many of the HIEs in the room here have tried, right? And vendors say, OK, we'll do that, but it'll cost you $100,000. It'll cost you a lot of money. You know, we took our cues here from other industries. If you look at USB, so everyone here has a computer, and then on the next two, you have a USB. That, was, that standard was created by the big partners in that industry coming together to define common implementation guides of how to connect every device together. And now you have a whole ecosystem of devices that connect to computers, right? We thought that could be possible here in, in our industry. So we set about, about developing a work group, working together with states and vendors collaboratively building implementation guides for direct and patient record lookup. So we look at it as a win-win-win strategy, right? For vendors, it's a fragmented market. It's an opportunity to differentiate your product in a really fragmented market and say, you know what? We're building against this common standard. It's going to work in New York. It's going to work in California. It's going to work anywhere else that is part of this work group. So we really can bring the cost of interfaces down. For our HIEs, you know, we don't have a lot of dollars left. Uh, we want to bring the cost down. And we, we don't want an engineer have to be required every time we build an interface to an HIE. There needs to be a simpler way. And for providers, they increase the value prop of their own EMR. We have a big program out now. We're um, trying to go to providers, tell them to demand interoperability from your vendors. Tell them we need it. Tell them, where, when are you getting it? And if you're not getting it, why? Right? So um, that seems to work. So the membership of the work group, um, we have 19 states that are part of it now. Um, California was a founding member. We have really, really thank their support. Um, 19 states that represent over 50% of the population. 
Uh, we also have um, 45 or so EHR and HIE vendors. And these EHR vendors are all the big players are here, including Epic, they're all here. And all of the big HIE vendors are all here, as well as many small vendors. And so it's, it's, it's not, there's no pay for play here. The cost of this whole work group to date has been paid for by New York. Um, so it's, it's really trying to move the market forward as opposed to being a pay for play kind of, kind of initiative. The other thing I will say is um, through the last two years as we've, we've developed this work group, um, really working with the senior engineers and the, the, the developers of the, the vendors as well as the state policy groups on, on the state side to make sure what we're developing here works for the industry. This is a very transparent process. We've also received a lot of industry support from IHE, the EHR Vendor Association, um, HL7, the list goes on uh, around some of the work that we've done here. And then, you know, to be part of the work group, it's not just joining a call, it's actually signing a document saying they're going to follow the standards that the work group puts out. So the states have agreed to um, actively participate, obtain buy-in from stakeholders, and then try to drive use of the standards through multiple ways, through policy, through contracts, through marketing, et cetera. And now we're getting to that point where we can say we are actually ready to actually do more of that. So that's great. And the vendors, they're, they're participating, they're working with their competitors, you know, they're working with standards base out there, but they're also committing to including it in the products. And now we're working very hard to make sure they're holding up their um, end of the bargain. So the key component specifications, really what we were looking at was a content spec that was really a pragmatic content spec, looking at what the capabilities were of the vendors today and what they could get to in the next year or two. So, um, you know, it's, it's a constrained C32. Um, it's, it's above meaningful use stage one. I think it's not as, as tight as MU2, but it's, it's in the middle someplace. For push, um, direct, the new and direct, it's really around HPD plus, the provider directory piece as well as making it, um, you know, driving towards implementation, reducing um, flexibility, and driving towards testable um, specifications. And patient record lookup, query-based exchange, this is the IHU profiles, XDSB, PICS PDQ. Okay, so it's, it, it should be um, fairly standard in terms of what the industry has seen. IHG has already accepted HPD Plus as a change request for, um, I guess, last year uh, uh, for HPD. So we have broad industry, um, um, support for it. Um, what we did also was um, we knew after we developed the specifications, the functional, technical, and test specifications, we had to hold vendors accountable, right? So it wasn't good enough they said, okay, we're doing it. Now tell us how are you doing it and when will you get there? So in an effort to reduce fragmentation in the industry, get a lot more stakeholders working together, we formed a strategic partnership with HealthyWay that run, operates the eHealth Exchange. Many of our patient record lookup standards were based on their standards as well, and then, you know, many of our, our members overlap. And we went through a fairly rigorous RFP last summer, and we selected CCHIT to be the testing certification body uh, for this program. And this certification program uh, at HIMSS this past year, we unveiled our SEALs. So it's a HIE certified family of SEALs. HIE certified community connects EHRs to HIEs for query-based exchange. HIE certified direct is all about EHRs and HISPs for direct. Now this is a very rigorous testing. Um, it's driving towards plug and play. And the goal here is to market to the provider community the value of using these EHRs that have this seal. It's very simple. The goal is to really drive towards plug and play interoperability. There's a lot of test cases in this program. It's not a low bar. It's much higher than mean if you use stage two. Um, so we, we fully expect that not every vendor will be able to test, but that's okay. We only want the best vendors to, to pass, and then we, we want to the bar very high. So for those of you who are the techies in the room, here is uh, the underlying specifications around these uh, test cases, or these, these seals. HI certified network is for the eHealth Exchange. It's a PD, QD, RD, MA, those profiles. HI certified community is for EHRs and HIEs, so if you have HIE certified community on your product, it should plug and play connect to any other HIE certified community product in the marketplace. And that's really PICS PDQ, XDSB, the document exchange specifications, and then also um, PDQ, DRDMA. So it overlaps very nicely with network. And then for direct, um, that's really around provider directory and the linking of EHRs and, and HISPs together. 
Um, so the bar here is very high. Um, our plan is to open up testing program for HI Certified Community later this year. And HI Certified Network um, is, I think, in pilot uh, now. And, and many of the large vendors have already committed uh, to being part of this program. So last not but not least, let me, let me tell you a little bit about the Exemplar HIE Governance Grant. So um, as, as I mentioned earlier, ONC awarded uh, NICE with the Exemplar HIE Governance Grant on behalf of the Interoperability Workgroup. It's really around the direct component of, of, of the, um, the program here. And it allows us to continue our path towards plug and play interoperability testing by looking at real live implementations of direct in the field, particularly on HISP to HISP exchange and take those learnings of what actually works in the field, tie it back to our testing program, and also share those learnings back to ONC. So the goals of the, of the pilots is to test various models that are out there for querying provider directories. Um, specifically around HPD+, um, we uh, have hired uh, uh, Robinson is an associate, you guys may know Carol Robinson, she's leading up this, this, um, this work group for us. And we, we, um, we've recruited five to seven uh, participants states and vendors to test HPD Plus, which I mentioned already. We're collaborating very closely with the SNI framework, um, working with them very tightly on who we're selecting, what the models that are out there in, in, that we're seeing, and how it ties back um, to the SNI framework. And the results will be tied back, it will create an implementation guide in, in early next year, and will be incorporated into our testing program also. So we reached out to over, I think, 25 states uh, around this, a lot, a lot of interest in the field. Um, you know, to be very honest, I think that vendors are in varying states of, of, of readiness around for HPD+. Some of the large vendors have it there, um, many of them do not, but many of them have a roadmap to get HPD+, in their, in their um, products by the end of the year, early 2014. So here are some initial pilots that have been formed. We're still identifying others. It, um, we have 10 states and 10 vendors um, that are part of this, this program. So as you see, many California stakeholders, which is fantastic, and Rim will, I'm sure, will talk a lot about what you guys are doing uh, around that. Um, but the goal here is really intrastate, so between states, HISP HISP, and also interstate. So you, might, you see here there's NICE and Healthy Link, which is actually our HISP, which is NICE is HIP, HISP and Healthy Link, which is another HISP in upstate New York. And, and really to look at different models and what works and what doesn't work. And over the course of the next few months, Carol and her team will be working very closely to monitor implementations, find out best practices of what works, what doesn't work, and then share them back to ONC as well as us around, here's really what we should test for. So some considerations for the pilots that we're just kind of toying with right now is, uh, do the pilots need to have HISP, HISP agreements already in place? Um, as Dr. Kibbe mentioned, it's pretty early still. Um, I think that um, you know, s some do, but they're still trying to figure out what that really means. Um, can we leverage the Direct Trust ENAC accreditation program? I think we absolutely want to, um, but will it be quick enough for us? And you know, will the Direct Trust accreditation be sufficient enough? I mean, I think we're still so early in, in the life cycle that I, depending on who you talk to, I think some people say it, it, it works, other people are saying, no, we need more out there still. So I think that's gonna be some of the key learnings we come through. And finally, are vendors ready, right? And I think that's sort of the, really the bottom line is, are the vendors ready? I know states are ready, it's part of our plan, we're going at it quickly, but are the vendors ready enough to do it yet in, in the time frame we want? So um, we're, we're working on a lot of pressure to get our vendors to commit. So finally, the milestones here, um, you know, we recruited the participants in the last few months here. We kicked off, I think, um, end of June. And um, over the next few months, will be monthly calls to check in on these pilots. Um, and finally, in, in February 2014, um, this, this grant will end, and we'll have learnings to share with the broader community, um, and also take those learnings and put it back into our testing program. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ryan.